Okay. Hi, everyone. If you are here on this webinar or video later on, you're here to hear about how to use Capstone Connect to support social studies, science, and social emotional learning projects in an elementary classroom. Uh, if you're joining us live right now, we want you to share in the chat where you teach, your grade levels, and why you came to the session. Okay, on the next slide, we'll introduce ourselves. I'm Sarah Norman. I am an elementary school teacher. I taught kindergarten for about 10 years. I've done some other work in data, instructional coach, and this year I am teaching fifth grade all virtually. And my name is Angie Kultoff. I started my teaching career teaching English um, as a learning language for students who are new to the country. And then I transitioned into the role of tech integration. And I've worked with a few different universities in teacher programs. And now I get to work at Capstone as a product manager and I focus in on curriculum and instruction. So a little bit about Angie and I, we've worked together for a long time now. And back in the day, um, we combined our last names, we combined classes one summer together. I was teaching kindergarten and Angie was teaching um, the English learners and we co-taught. And so we really struggled that summer with knowing what do we call our kids because they were K-1 combo kids. They weren't just Norman students, they weren't Kultoff students. So we came up with Norma. Norma. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's been uh, fantastic. We loved working together, all things teaching and technology related. So we started to do some projects on the side, talk to different people, um, just share our journey and really get a chance to learn not only from each other, but from everybody else as well. And way back when we were really interested in helping our kids not only learn specific skills with technology, but also how to create and do research and really dig into what they were interested in. So if you're looking at this picture right now and you see the table with the Chromebooks set around it, that was actually from a day that we used Pebble Go to do an animal research project. So that's um, a fun memory that I'll always have. And I always think back to now as I work at Capstone, like what did I want then as a teacher and how can I help teachers get those things? For sure. So today, our goal for this webinar is to help inspire you to bring projects to your classroom that allow your students to research topics, as well as apply their learning to creative projects, which will offer them choice and they'll be able to and we'll share tips that we've learned along the way. So as you can see, here's our agenda. We're going to start with what is Capstone Connect? We'll watch a quick video and give a little overview, and then we'll jump right into the projects. And Sarah is our elementary teacher doing these projects, so she's going to share with you how the projects are aligned to Bloom's taxonomy, the standards, how we use Capstone Connect in some of these projects as we work together to build them and different ed tech tools that um, really supported these projects. And then as always, it's really helpful to hear from teachers who have done the project to share their tips that they've learned so that if you decide you wanna do this too, you have a little head start or a heads up as you get going. So to get started, we'll first watch this quick video on Capstone Connect so you can get a little background on what it is. You're a teacher. You spend hours every week finding resources for your students, the right resources. You gather it, you send it, they click it and get an error or have to create yet another login and password. They get frustrated. Ah! Their caregivers get frustrated. Ah! And you get frustrated. Ah! There is an easier way. Introducing Capstone Connect, your one-stop content hub, where you can quickly and easily search and share educationally appropriate, highly engaging Capstone content. Capstone Connect gives you instant access to Pebble Go, Pebble Go Next, Pebble Go Spanish, Pebble Go Read More, Capstone Interactive's collection of eBooks with read aloud audio, and hundreds of other digital learning resources designed for use by both teachers and students. With Capstone Connect, you have thousands of content pieces that are matched to state and national standards right at your fingertips. No matter what ed tech tool you're using, 
you can give your students direct access to Capstone Connect's content with just a few clicks. Here's how it works. Once you've signed into your Pebble Go account, simply click the Capstone drop-down menu and select Search. Here you can search by either state and national standards or by title and get instant results, which you can organize by type and also preview each item to find the exact content you're looking for. Then just copy the link and directly add it to any EdTech platform to give your students one-click access. No new logins or passwords required. <gasps> Connecting your students to great resources has never been easier with Capstone Connect. Go to capstoneconnect.com and click Request More Information to be contacted by your local Capstone representative. Okay, so you just saw a quick overview of Capstone Connect. And really, it's a great place to go to find all of our rich resources that you can use with your students. Um, like you saw in the video, Pebble Go modules and different ebook bundles within Capstone Interactive. And as a teacher, when you're lesson planning, you can search by standard or title and get a really easy to use copy link button that has your username and password built right into the URL so that you just share it with students and they don't have to remember a username or password. And I remember in my kindergarten classroom, as a teacher, I did so many things to try to avoid usernames and passwords because it was a headache when we were in person. And now with the different distance learning um, situations that we're in, the easier we can make it for our students and families to access this great content, the better. I don't know, Sarah, what do you think? Do you agree? Yeah, being virtual definitely adds an extra layer of um, difficulty for helping. So the smoother transitions they can be, the way better these lessons go, 100%. Great, so on the next slide, again, we'll just show you what you just saw in the video and we'll dig into this a little bit deeper as we go throughout the presentation, but you can search for resources by standard or title search. And when your resources are returned to you on one page, you'll be able to see different Pebble Go articles and Capstone Interactive eBooks. And some of our eBooks even have instructional materials connected with them. So you'll get an eBook, let's say on forces, and then you would have instructional materials to go with it. So it'd be a lesson plan with different questions to ask, maybe some examples on how you could um, create different activities. And then what we'll show you today is how to create some of those activities with different ed tech tools. And I'm going to put my teaching hat back on for a minute. So when you're thinking about designing lessons for your classroom or school or your students, um, TPAC was a model that I often used because I would come into a classroom and co-teach with Sarah, for example, and wear my technology hat. So I would bring that technical, the technology ed tech background in. And we both had some teaching pedagogy that we'd bring together. And Sarah, as the classroom teacher, had a lot of that content knowledge. So the way we would work together and bring all of our expertise and experience would really build a solid lesson because we would be thinking about the technology, the content, and the pedagogy. So we're hoping to share with that with you today. So like Angie said, every lesson that we've approached, uh, we really want to make sure that our students are gaining as much knowledge and information as possible. And a great way to think of that is a learning pyramid. And that just helps um, before we sit down to kind of plan out that lesson, looking at the standards, how do we want to approach it? And the learning period describe or pyramid describes the different um, how much retention a student will have um, based on what that practice is. So if it's just a lecture, um, they'll retain about 5% of that information. Um, but all the way up to if they're teaching others, they'll retain 90%. So what you'll see here today is a variety of lessons um, that we try to really get down deep into that pyramid as much as possible so that we can really maximize that learning time. In the class uh, that I have currently right now, which all the le these lessons were all from this year, we've done them together. Um, it's a fully online class, a group of fifth grade students, about 24 kids, but it does vary um, depending on the week. We have had some students come and go just based on the 2020-21 uh, school year that we have. We utilize Google Classroom 
Uh, we have one-to-one -one iPads. Um, Google Meets is really my home away from home. That's our synchronous learning time. But I also use HyperDocs quite a bit for asynchronous learning, which you'll see woven throughout these lessons that we're going to chat about. So the first types of lessons that we wanted to talk about is a really big piece um, that I wanted to focus on this year is our social emotional learning. And with, through this, we wanna make sure that the students are applying um, what they are learning about the social emotional learning to their lives. So it's not just something they're taking in. So here's some different ways that we did that. The tools that we use, Pebble Go, Capstone Interactive eBooks, they've been fantastic for SEL as well as some Jamboard and Flipgrid. Um, so we'll go into that a little bit further. The first piece that we always look at when we plan our lessons is the standards. And we use the CASEL standards for this um, to determine the best social emotional um, learning components that we wanted to focus on with each um, lesson that we've done. And I'll let Angie talk a little bit more about this, but Capstone has been great for our SEL lessons. So within Capstone Connect, you have access to a health module in Pebble Go. And within Pebble Go, we have a whole area on social emotional learning. So for example, in Sarah's classroom, we looked into the making new friends. So students were able to go into Pebble Go and do some research on making new friends. But we also have some books inside of Capstone Interactive, our ebook platform, about making friends. So not only could they do some research um, within Pebble Go and the articles, there were also books around it. And we did have a question in the chat. I just wanna address and make sure that the way I answered it uh, makes sense to you. So yes, you can share links to Pebble Go without having students log in with the username and password. As a teacher, you log in first, you click the button to copy link, and that link has the username and password um, connected inside of it. We call it a direct link. So when you share it with a student or a family member, they just click on it and it goes right into Pebble Go. And if somebody who's used that quite extensively now, I can tell you it works amazing. It's the best thing ever. It's a fantastic, fantastic piece for that. So with the SEL, we did talk about making new friends. And so one way that I wanted to make sure that my students were still connecting with each other. So after we researched um, and read about that and kept coming back to that, we had students record messages for each other. So if a new student would join us or if somebody was going back to in-person, they could use messages or create messages and leave them in Flipgrid. So it kind of worked as a platform for them. And then I could compile them and send them to the student or to the parents. That way they have something to stay connected with the class. So Flipgrid is a great tool. One of the pieces you should check out if you're uh, new to Flipgrid is they have an amazing discovery library where they have lots of lessons or ideas pre-made for you. So something like a welcome to our class project is already in there for you and you can just um, use that lesson template. And as you see on the screen here, Capstone is a partner with Flipgrid. So you can go to Flipgrid in the discovery library and find the Capstone page. And we have a lot of different prompts to get you started to share topics with your students. Another tech tool that we use with our social emotional learning time is Jamboard. And Jamboard is free for teachers. Um, it's through Google. It's very integrated into Google Meets as well. And Jamboard can be a great place to jot quick ideas down. It's basically like if you have a post-its, if you were in person, it's a bunch of sticky notes and we're putting it on um, anchor chart paper. So students can record messages for each other. You can um, upload pictures, as you can see. We had one where everybody brought their pets in, um, things that you're grateful for. So it's a wonderful, quick feedback tool. Uh, you can also download your Jamboards and print them as PDFs, which is helpful if you're ever making something for somebody like a collage or different things like that. I will say a word of caution though, sometimes Jamboard is not my jam because they can actually delete um, each other's post-it notes. And I'm hoping the great people at Google are working on fixing that so that is not an issue. Um, so be cautious with that with your younger learners, they can accidentally delete each other's post-its. So here's an example. We just had paraprofessional week last week, and that is a paraprofessional that works in our class. So we made a jam board. We talked about appreciation and respect and different things that we like about people. We read about that through Capstone and everybody created a note for Miss Kathy. So a lot of different ways that you can use it. 
um, a lot of wonderful um, with Flipgrid as well. When my daughter started in a new class this year, actually her teacher did that is compiled a bunch of welcome videos. And it meant so much to my daughter and to me that she got to see some faces before she started in that class. And I thought that's an amazing idea. I have to do that in my classroom. So it's a lot of fun and a great way to integrate um, those SEL topics. So in the chat real quick for the people who are joining us, we would love to know what you're thinking about. How can you incorporate um, student research with PebbleGo and eBooks with SEL? So go ahead and type it in the chat and we'll continue to watch, but we'll, we'll keep going with our presentation, but we'd love to see your thoughts and how you think you could use it. Awesome. All right. The next project that we wanted to share a little bit about is an Everglades project that we worked on that really looked at both social studies and some science standards. And our focus on this project was to make sure that the students could um, work on different conservation efforts and tie that into something that we were learning about, not only in our curriculum, our reading curriculum, but then we connected it in a variety of ways, which we'll show you about here. Some of the tools that we used was Pebble Go and the eBooks were fantastic for this. And then we used an app called Sketches School, uh, which we'll share more about to, that really allows kids to do some really cool stuff with drawing. I learned about that from our art teacher. And then we utilized the tech tool from the National Park Service. We got to go on an amazing virtual field trip. The standards that we looked at here were really focused in the science area and making sure that um, the kids are tying that through and through, like I said, with conservation, different national, natural systems and um, environments as well. So like, like you saw in the video and we've talked about a little bit already, uh, once Sarah was able to go in and do a standard search and click on the standards, all of the resources were returned to her on one page. And if she found a book or a uh, Pebble Go Next article that she wanted to share, there was just like the small copy link button that you see in the upper right corner of your screen with the arrow. She just clicked on that, it copied the link for her, and then we'll show you where we put it, but it just, again, makes it really easy for students and families to access that content. And this is one of the things that was shared. So within CI, there is a book about a class that goes on a field trip to the Everglades, just like Sarah's, except um, maybe theirs was in person and not virtual. Uh, but one of the things we were able to do is have students read this book and then there's an instructional material attached to it. So it laid out some different questions uh, to ask students and some different mind map options to bring this to her class and help them think deeper about the book. Which was a great resource as this is my first year teaching in fifth grade. I've taught for many years, but this is my first year with the kids and I really appreciated having those extra question stems and pieces to make those connections for me. So after we did our research and did some pre reading, we went on a field trip. I had just been looking around for different ways to take a field trip to the Everglades and I found out that through the National Park System, they actually offer an online um, virtual field trip where you get your very own park ranger. You can see our park rangers here, um, who is fantastic, so charismatic. Um, for an hour, kept my entire group of fifth graders entertained and just totally engaged throughout. So I cannot speak highly enough of this. It is a wonderful um, tool to use and it is open to anybody. It is free. It was about a two week wait um, when I signed up to when I got to actually go on the field trip. And I highly, um, highly recommend it. And after we did that hour long um, field trip, then I had the students come back and I wanted to tie it all in together. The research that we've read about, the different conservation co topics that we've been talking about. So they got to create in Sketches School, which is an app that we featured here. It's free for teachers. And they got to make their own, um, Plate. like they get to describe their favorite part of the park and how conservation is important to that area um, because on the field trip in and through the books that we read we went to a variety of places within the Everglades. What I really like about Sketches School is not only do the kids have all the materials on there because a lot of my students don't have different paints and um, crayons and art materials at home so they're able to still access that and use the different um, mediums to create but also for my kids that aren't huge um, artists, not big drawers, if you will, they liked it because they can download a picture um, or just find one online or use one from our field trip and they can trace over it and um, make it their own. 
of an example of that on this next page. So um, they had caught a Python live during our virtual field trip. And one of my students was fascinated with that and what that means to that environment, but was hesitant to draw their own. So they took a photo and then drew over it to make that photo their own and still participate in the project. I will tell you, this is the best virtual field trip I've ever gone on. In fact, it might even be the best field trip I've ever gone on in person or virtual. So engaging, so much information, so much knowledge. I learned a lot of new things and it was really fun. And you just, you can't top that. My students still talk about it and I feel like it's going to be a, something they talk about for a long, long time. So one question we have for people who are here, and if you're just joining us now, Sarah is a fifth grade teacher in a fully virtual classroom. So she's sharing some different projects that she's done. And we would like to know, has anyone been on a virtual field trip? So in the chat, go ahead and tell us, yes, I have, or no, I haven't. And then we wanna follow it up with, what are some other things you think kids could research based on this Everglades field trip? So we'll continue and we'll keep watching the chat. Awesome. One, another project we did this year was in regards to simple machines. And I was not sure how to do this uh, virtually. So it was wonderful um, to have Capstone Connect to help um, make the standards and meet those needs of the kids because we wanted to really work on that applying um, focus and make sure that they could understand what these simple machines are and then dig a little bit deeper and really um, talk about the impact that those simple machines have and the connection to engineering focus and designing and um, piquing their curiosity with that. Some of the tools we used during this lesson were Pebble Go and Capstone Connect. Uh, we also use a lot of Google Slides to share different information, which we'll show you, as well as Nearpod, and we'll talk a little bit about that, and then Flipgrid as well to do a gallery walk so they can come back at the end of their lesson and connect with each other. The standards that we looked at here were the science standards with the simple machines, but we also wanted to make sure that there was the scientific inquiry piece in that engineering and design component interwoven throughout that you'll see. So within Connect, there were there were a, a, there are a lot of resources for simple machines. So I just pulled a few so you could um, see a little closer some of the the books that we had to offer. And then again, there's a book on simple machines with an instruction material with it. So again, there's a whole lesson plan, questions to ask, and some examples of how you could do this activity with students. Yeah, and it was great to connect those pieces to the curriculum that we have from school, it really extended that and brought it um, into the students hands, which I loved. So Angie, Maine, do you want to talk a little bit about the bookshelf? Yeah, I was just going to say we so we we talked early on in this project. And Sarah let me know that she's going to work on simple machines. So I started to look through connect. And I just found so many resources. I was wondering, what would be a great way to show this to her students knowing that they use Google Classroom? So we simply made an ebook shelf on a Google Slides that she could insert right into her Google Classroom. And we have a how-to video if you're interested in making an ebook shelf in Google Slides on our Capstone YouTube channel, but it's also linked on this presentation, which you'll have access to later. And this is great. Not only could I show the kids when I was doing it um, during our synchronous learning, but it was wonderful to have in our asynchronous learning and integrate within the HyperDoc. So it made it easy to access for all of the students. So after we spent some time researching and doing the learning portion of that, we I wanted to integrate those machines and I wasn't sure how to do it, how to get some of that interactive um, the lab component of the science with it. So that's where I found Nearpod. And Nearpod has a free and a premium version. There's a free version for teachers. And it's a great way to build your own library of lesson plans. And within there, they have some already created that you can use. So when I did a search, I found quite a few already done as simple machines. But then I also was able to add in my own or customize them for what I thought would fit with my fifth graders. And what was really helpful with Nearpod in this, then after we've done the research, we were able to do some different interactive videos and different simulations so they could start to understand what those simple machines were, as well as some fun ways like this gamified quiz that you see to check for understanding and do different vocabulary work, um, made it much more engaging and interactive as well. 
after they made their own simple machines based on the research and shared out, then we had them create a video and they shared their video to Flipgrid, which again, that is free for teachers. It's a video sharing platform that has all sorts of content already created for teachers that you can utilize in your classroom, whether it's in-person or distance learning. I really like to Flipgrid recently added comments and you can do text comments, which my students absolutely love. It gives it very much that kind of social media um, feel to it, but I can still moderate them and make sure that they are school um, appropriate and what they need to be doing. So when we started to do those comments, we decided to have them do what's called a tag response. And you can see it listed out there. A tag response is either tell me something you've liked ask me a question about my video or give me a suggestion. So right into the rubric of the projects, I started to um, include those responses part of their grade so that we can really facilitate that conversation even though we can't be face-to-face um, -face and one-on-one -on -one in person. Some thoughts about this. Here's some examples of what my students made. Um, it was a lot of fun. Keep it open-ended. It was neat to see them create these projects at home. The one on the top right is actually an example of a screw, which I thought was fascinating that she found that material to make it and to hear her explain it in a video and what it is uh, was really, really interesting. So I highly recommend um, not only using that research piece, but then tying it all the way into the creation process and letting them apply what they've learned um, throughout and sharing it on Flipgrid was fun. And again, we encourage you and invite you to share in the chat if you've done anything with simple machines or if you have a favorite book or Pebble Go article. Yeah. Another great article or another great lesson that we worked on for social studies is when we really looked at our Native American shelters, American history is a big component to fifth grade um, social studies. And so we wanted to make sure that we were giving them a chance not just to listen or read about it um, in our textbook, which is a little bit outdated, but we wanted to, so I wanted to build a lot into that and went to Angie and I'm like, we've got to make this so cool. We can, what can we do? And it has, it was a ton of fun to see um, not what the students could come up with. So creating was really our focus on this. I wanted to make sure they could create something um, which tied in really easily with the shelters based on what we were learning about the different tribes. Some of the tools we used, again, Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next has fantastic articles, um, which my students love digging into and really extended the information that was given to us in our textbook. We used Nearpod um, for a lot of interactive components, which I'll show you, and then Flipgrid as well to share out. The standards that we uh, worked on here, and again, like Angie has pointed out before, it was really easy for me to jump into Capstone Connect and find the standard search and see a ton of different resources, since there were so many different ways we could really go with this. And if you're just joining us and missed the first part, we had a video that explained Capstone Connect. But what you see in the upper right corner is Capstone Connect, and it's a place where Sarah went to find the standards she was teaching, once she clicked on it, she had a list of resources returned to her, including Pebble Go Next articles, um, Capstone interactive eBooks and instructional materials. And if she found something that she wanted to share with her students, she just clicked the copy link button that the arrow's pointing to, and then brought that to, like she said, Nearpod and Flipgrid. And so when students click on that link, it automatically logs them in. It knows the username and password, making it really easy and, and smooth for them to get to those resources. Yeah, it was really seamless. And she just mentioned too that within Pebble Go Next, we have a whole module on American Indian history and you can find different tribes by their region and students can really dig in and get a wealth of knowledge. And with all of our resources at Capstone, our resources as a student, you have the option for it to be read to you. So you can click a button and have all of the text read to you. And it's read to you by a person, not a computer generated voice. And that is a feature that I, I really found to be so helpful during this because of our textbook is so um, heavy with the content specific vocabulary and things. So for my readers that were struggling, that was hard for them to get into. But when we came here, they were really able to then listen to it and just get so much more information from the content. And within the modules and the articles themselves, there's a whole section for each tribal nation on 
their shelters. And that's what Sarah's whole project was on. So it's a, it's a great resource if your students are going to be building something. Yeah, which was fun. So we have, we focused on the shelters and like Angie said, so after we did our research or while we were doing our research, kind of layered in as we went through each of the different tribes and talked about the different um, components to that, we brought in some different virtual field trips that you can see here. So what was great about Nearpod, I had found online, I think it, I was just looking for different virtual field trips. I wasn't exactly sure what was out there. And I had stumbled across these great interactive photos that you could go through, but I was hesitant to send my students there um, just because I didn't want them looking at everything that was on the website. But through Nearpod, then I can pull those interactive photos in and you can see examples of two of them on the right there, like inside um, the longhouse, inside the different pyramids that we had. And you could bring that into Nearpod and that kept them there which to me as the teacher then that just made me feel so much better about and safer with the content that I was sharing them because I knew they were focused directly where I wanted them to go. And another really cool piece about Nearpod is they also have a 3D Explorer. So that Mayan um, pyramid that you see, you can actually rotate it all the way around. Um, you can zoom in, can see the detail then through the different virtual field trips with the photograph of what it looks like now. So the kids really got to get a very hands-on um, approach and hands-on time with some things that were just kind of uh, right flat and in our textbook. It made it all come to life, which tied in really nicely because then I wanted them to pick one to create and then go back and research some more. So after they read about all of them, they went back, picked their own American um, Indian tribe and researched it some more and created their own Native American shelter and then shared out different facts about the um, shelter and about the tribe that they researched in their Flipgrid videos. And again, we did a gallery walk with that when we were done where um, they got to go and watch everybody else's videos and use the tag response, which stands for tell me something you liked ask me a question or give me a suggestion. And that just helped to facilitate those conversations even more um, with my distance learners. Here's some examples um, of the different Native American shelters. And it makes me so proud when I see all the cool things that they came up with. Um, my Some thoughts on this, it takes a lot of time for the exploration and the research piece. So make sure you're giving plenty of time and the creation as well. I left it really open-ended and I had no idea um, what was going to come from that. And I was blown away. The picture on the top left is actually created from different parts of a leftover McDonald's cups and um, their McDonald's Happy Meal pieces. That's what they used. And that's cool um, To We had kids um, creating things outside using actual sticks that you can see which I love to see that they're going outside. And I had a student make something in um, Minecraft, which was amazing. He ran with it and did so much detail inside of it and shared a lot of great information. So it was a great insight for me to see and learn a little bit more about their personalities as well. And if you're wondering, is that snow or sand? It's <laughs> snow. We're it in Minnesota. <laughs> very Minnesota-like, yes, it is snow. Speaking of snow and being in Minnesota, our next lesson that we wanted to talk about that I wasn't exactly sure how to approach and I'm glad that um, I got to have Capstone Connect to help me is with our holidays in social studies unit. And we wanted to create something. I knew I wanted them to make something while still learning about their world and the different holidays around the world, but I needed it to be really at that fifth grade level. So we were able to use um, Pebble Go, Pebble Go Next and um, the eBooks as well as a Merge Cube. And we'll talk a little bit more uh, about what a Merge Cube is. Some of the standards, again, um, we wanted to really bring in that digital platform and utilizing the different sources as well as creating something with the multimedia work. Uh, so that piece also accompanied when we were working on the holiday. So it was nice to have the options in the search feature within Capstone Connect. And in Minnesota, within our standards, we have some technology built into them. But if you're in a state that you don't have that, a great place to go to look for some guidance is, are the ISTE standards for students. So that's another resource that you could use. But again, as Sarah was looking for different holiday articles and eBooks to share, Within Capstone Connect, she searched by standards. She could also search by title. So if she, if there was a, a specific holiday that she was really looking for, she could type that holiday into the title search and 
see what resources come up. And if she found a resource she wanted to use, again, that copy link button is right there, really easy for you to share that great content out with your students and not require them to log in. So within Pebble Go, we have a whole um, area on holidays, all these different holidays that you're able to share with your students and have them do their own research on. And we're always open to feedback. So if there are additional holidays that you want to see, let us know and we'll um, bring that information to our content planning team. So after we read about different holidays around the world, it really sparked some great, even SEL conversations about our own traditions and what makes us unique. And I wanted to celebrate that with the students as well as give them something to create. So Angie and I had talked quite a bit about Merge Cubes and you can um, print a Merge Cube if you want, or you can purchase one. And what it is, it's a tool that you can use. There's, it's free online and it really allows you to, um, it's an AR tool. So when you hold the Merge Cube and you view it through the app, you can see different things that either somebody else created or that you created. For example, like the solar system, and then you would be holding the solar system. It would transform the cube through the app to look like the solar system in your hand. Um, different plant cells, things like that. So we thought this would be a really great time to build their own snow globe and create their own snow globe, um, but do it virtually and based on their own holiday tradition. So you can see a screenshot there of some of the different um, format of the different types that we used. The thing about Merge Cube is it is a little bit tricky um, if you're just starting out. So it really has high level computational thinking. My students um, got to process quite a bit, lots of problem solving, which was great. I loved it, especially for those high flyers. It really helped with that outside of the box thinking. And I would suggest if you're thinking of utilizing Merge Cube in your classroom, um, start by just the viewing portion of it, having something already made. But when it comes time for them to create something, um, to create a project, you can use what's called remixes. So I created the base for a few different types of snow globes. And then the students got to take those bases and they got to personalize it. So you can see um, in one of the examples, they added Grinch and added some names. Um, most of them added different pictures in there, music that they liked, traditional things that they did with their family. And then we allowed them to wrap those up and gift that to um, some of their grownups that they wanted to. And it was a, a fun memento for them to share. All right. And one of our last projects that we wanted to share with you all about is Landforms. We've been working on this and I'm still going through kind of wrapping it up as that's also a big piece of my science curriculum this year. And wanted to not only have them really think about the different landforms, but analyze that and bring in the different um, what's happening, right, with the environment and what changes do we have, bringing in erosion, topography, all those different components to landforms as well. So this project um, was a pretty big project. We utilized a lot of tech tools with that. Uh, we had um, Nearpod, utilized Pebble Go, Capstone Connect for sure, the different Google Slides that we um, shared information. Also brought in an app called AR Maker that I'll share a little bit more about in a little bit and Flipgrid as well for that gallery walk. The end. So the standards we focused on here was looking at the different changes of um, earth science and the uh, changes that happened to the earth. So it was great again, to be able just to type that standard in and see a lot of different resources um, that my students could, different, could look into different venues if they wanted to learn more about erosion or learn more about topography, things like that. So as a teacher in Minnesota, Sarah went into Capstone Connect picked Minnesota as her state and picked the science standards and then went into fifth grade and saw all of the standards listed and found this specific standard with all of the resources listed. And let me tell you, we have a lot of resources on this topic. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun topic. It's been a lot of fun. So we worked on this together to build it out a little bit and um, we landed on building it out inside of Google Slides. So. What you see on the screen here are a bunch of different slides within a Google slide deck that was shared through Google Classroom for her students. 
but you see screenshots um, or images of the different Capstone Interactive eBooks that were used, also screenshots of the PebbleGo and PebbleGo Next articles. And we tried to separate them out by different types of landforms for her students to do their research. And within the same slide deck were slides for them to capture their resource and take notes to continually use. And again, um, we, we used a link, the direct link for all of these resources. So when students would click on the book about, uh, let's say the beach, because I'd love to be at the beach right now. When they click on the link for the beach book, it brings them right to that book and it doesn't prompt them for a username and password. That's all built right into that direct link. In this format worked really well. And I also had students too that maybe started to do their research picked a type of landform, maybe they were doing um, valleys. And then when they're getting into the research, they realized that that maybe wasn't exactly what they wanted to do. And so it was easy for them to modify and adjust and have those resources still right at their fingertips so they could continue with the project and not lose any time with it. I wanna jump in one more thing. Can you go back one slide? Yeah. So Capstone Connect helped us find all of these great resources. But another thing you might notice in Pebble Go is the copy link directly on the PebbleGo page. So when you're looking at the screen in the lower right corner, you see the PebbleGo page and you see an arrow pointing at that copy link. So that's another way to easily share content with your students um, within your Capstone Connect account. Capstone Connect, the title search and the standard search is a great place for you as the teacher to go and like look at all of the resources that we have aligned for you. But if you stumble upon something as you're looking in Pebble Go, as you're doing your own exploration, that copy link button is right there for you. And again, we'll give you that direct link with the username and password built right in. Okay, you can go to the next yeah. one. So throughout, again, I wanted to really make sure that these were these landforms, this um, subject was coming to life for my students. And so not only did we have those great interactive books, the readers that read aloud to them added a lot to our base science curriculum. We brought in different vir virtual reality field trips and I utilized Nearpod a lot for that again, because if, for instance, I found this awesome Grand Canyon field trip where you could really wander around and see so many different places. It was amazing. You felt like you were right there. And, but it was on a website that I didn't want my students just to go to on their own. So I was able to embed that right into the Nearpod um, lesson that I had created. And that kept them only on the part of the, that web page that I wanted them to be at. And so it was a way for all of this to be connected together for them. So after they researched and explored and discovered, then they were tasked to make their own landform out of anything that they had. It needed to be a 3D landform. And also, as Angie mentioned, we integrated different research questions into that Google slide that we shared out to them with the different um, research um, books and articles. So then what they did is they took screenshots from their research that they did and they layered that on top of their landform project that they created by using this app called AR Maker. AR stands for Augmented Reality and this is an app that's free that my school district uses and we've used it a few times leading up to this project which I highly recommend just to let the kids play around with it, get used to it, what the different functions are. But then you can take certain pieces like from our research or different pictures and you then blend that or layer it on top of your environment. So you can see two of the projects that they made, um, that two of my students made. The top one's a river, the bottom one is a beach. And then you can see some of their floating research there. We then had the students share their research so they needed to present it so they created a it's usually about a two minute video that they then were able to upload into flipgrid so then once they shared their ar maker video there we did a gallery walk where they got to go in and listen to each other's videos and also use that tag response system so i wanted them to make sure they responded to at least two people and they got to choose if it was telling them something they liked about their video asking a question and giving a suggestion. And I made them have at least one, um, they had to pick two different types of responses to really help facilitate that. So it's not just, I like what you did, or that's cool. I wanted to really um, bring that a little bit deeper from them. And then they could to continue ask and answer the questions, which they love doing right on Flipgrid. 
some thoughts on this project. There's a couple other examples you can see there. Give it lots of time. This project is probably well over a month now with all of the delays that we've had that took with the research and embedding that um, throughout. And it also took a while because my students were at home, um, it took them a while to make their uh, 3D landform, but it was so much fun. The families, I got a lot of great feedback from my families. I had sent home a simple recipe to make a simple salt dough. And, but they could also have just used anything they had at home. Some kids went outside and built it in the snow. Some of them used Play-Doh, kinetic sand, anything that they had. Um, and it was neat for them to show what they had learned throughout the process by what they created. And then also add their own personal touches. I'm not sure if you can see in the bottom left, that beach is called Sirius Black Beach by one of my Harry Potter fanatics. She was thought that was quite fun to bring all of that in. So you can see actually um, Harry Potter characters lounging there along <laughs> the ocean side. So it is a great project to do. We had a ton of fun. And again, that AR maker, they'll go step by step and um, let the students really explore with that and create some pretty specific tutorials to help. But what's fun is if you can, on the Seacliff one, those um, words are actually rotating. So within AR maker, it lets you personalize the objects that you're layering on top of it. So some of them got to have a lot of fun getting fancy and doing the different design components, which was an added bonus to this project. So uh, we're hoping that from out throughout the whole presentation today, you've heard a lot about all the great rich content inside of Capstone Connect and how it partners so well with different ed tech tools. And one of them is Flipgrid. And we're really happy to partner with Flipgrid. Like you saw in the presentation, we have a bunch of topics already created in our discovery library partnership page. But if you're new to Flipgrid and you're thinking, hmm, I want to learn more about that, Sarah and I are going to do a webinar with uh, Anne from Flipgrid on February 18th. And that webinar is going to walk you through step by step. So Sarah is going to show again some of the lessons she showed today to help you think about how you could use Capstone Connect and Flipgrid. Then I'll walk you through a live demo step by step how to get into Pebble Go as a teacher, get into Capstone Connect from Pebble Go, search by a standard or a topic, click that copy link button for either an article from Pebble Go or a Capstone Interactive ebook and bring that into Flipgrid. So then at that point, I'll hand it off to Anne and she'll walk you through how to set up your teacher account in Flipgrid, create a topic and share it with your students. So our goal is that you come in, get inspired and you can leave already having something created if you're following along with us that you can use with your students the next day. So sign up will be available on Friday on our Capstone Connect website. And if you have any questions about how to get there, um, Brian will be here at TCEA and um, we'd love to help, help you sign up for that. And on the next slide, we are just thrilled that you joined us today. And again, if you have questions after the presentation today, both Sarah and I are on Twitter, so you can reach out to us um, individually or together if you have questions about any of the projects and we look forward to connecting with you. And yeah. at this time, I think we'll stop the recording, Brian, you can go.